Hey everyone, it's Spicy Sushi. So it has come to my attention that the community is in need of some omniscience crafting guides. So this is going to be a pretty big undertaking and hopefully I can uh, do the community a service with these crafting guides. They're going to be Craft of Exile because I have so many guides I need to pump out and I don't have time to do everything in game. But I will do my best to be as clear and communicate as much as possible and as easily as, easily as possible. So to do that, I'm going to be laying down some assumptions for the boots that you want today. We're going to be covering omniscience boots and we're going to craft from there. So these assumptions are that you want at least two attributes on your boots. Uh, you know, sometimes people want one T1 attribute. They want chaos res, they want spell suppression, or maybe they want one attribute, spell suppression, deafening essence of loathing, something like that. But for this assumption, for this video, I'm going to say you want at least two attributes on your boots for, on, for omniscience. Uh, for method one assumption, I'm going to say you want 50 plus percent avoid ailments, avoid elemental ailments. This is a great defensive layer. Uh, you can reach the other 50% quite easily from chest and your tree or, you know, there's other means, obviously. Now, uh, if you don't know how important avoid elemental ailments are, you know, this is not just shock. This isn't just ignite, uh, you know. If you're playing a very low life build, which which Omniscience does, you're going to want to be able to avoid ailments because this also is brittle and scorch, which and something like Simulacrum is going to absolutely one tap you. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, and cover that for method one. And for method two, we're going to assume you want spell suppression or chaos res instead of your deafening essence of loathing. So we're going to cover boots with two attributes with spell suppression or two attributes with chaos res. So. Let's go ahead and jump into method one. Now, the first thing before we jump in, we're gonna cover getting our base though. So uh, most people use dragon scale boots because they are hybrid dexterity and intelligence. And I can include this trade search in the video if you guys would like. We're gonna be going for fractured T1 of either dexterity or strength. Uh, we're gonna have not corrupted. And basically the market is pretty slim, but you don't have to go with dragon scale. You could obviously go with slink boots if you wanna go pure evasion or a worse base. Um, all of the boot spaces are gonna be like dragon scale, two-toned, hydro scale, worm scale. You know, there's, there's a lot of choices. The only thing it changes is gonna be the flat armor and evasion on your boots. But for this video, I'm gonna focus on dragon scales. So let's go ahead and jump into crafting our first pair of boots. Now, if you want to set this up yourself, let me go through it with you on Craft of Exile. We go to the emulator, we go to Create Item, we go to Boots, we go to Strength and Dex. You'll choose whichever base you want to use. We're going to be using Dragon Scales. Uh, we're not going to be using an Influence because these are going to be Eldritch. And we're going to be assuming high item level. Now, it's not really going to matter for Spell Suppression. You're going to want 85 item level plus. If you're wanting, uh, you know, we're already covering T1 attribute with 82 item level, so that doesn't really matter. But if you want T1 res, you'll do 84. T1 chaos res, 81. You're not gonna really going to care about resistance on Omni, obviously, so that's not really an issue. But T1 spell suppression, 85. T1 chaos res, 81. Um, and for our case, since we're doing the loathing, we really don't need to worry about item level at all other than our T1 attribute. So... For either one of the fracture, we're actually just going to be using, uh, for the avoid ailment method, we're going to be doing uh, our deafening loathing essences right here. And we're going to spam these until we hit tier one or tier two of dexterity in this case. So we hit tier three there, but I want to go for tier two. Let's go to the calculator and how you would set this up. So dragon scale boots. Let's assume we have our item level 100 this time so I can have accurate for this scenario. Um, you'll just put the item level of whatever boots that you got. It, it'd be 82, obviously, though. We're going to click Loathing Essence, and our boots are fractured, so make sure you click that Fracture button. I see a lot of people, they get incorrect num uh, numbers on their chance because they don't click this button, and we have Fractured Strength. And what we are looking for is T2 or higher dexterity. So this is going to be 35 loathing essences on average. If you want to go for Tier 1, that's going to be 70 loathing essences on average. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We're going to be using these until we hit the dexterity that we're looking for. Now we hit T1 Chaos Res. And so if you don't want, you know, we assumed you, that you want two attributes. But if you hit this, if you just roll a deafening into T1 Chaos Res, I would say you stop here. <laughs> and, and we'll go into what you do in step two for these boots. But uh, this is where you would stop, obviously. If you hit anything amazing like that, T1 Spell Suppression, T1 Chaos Res, definitely consider stopping and just selling it. But anyway... We're going to use these. We said 1 in 35, I believe, for our tier 2 dexterity. 
Um, so there we go. There's our tier two dexterity. And now for step two, all we're going to do is we're going to spend two divines right here. Suffixes cannot be changed. And we're going to use a veiled chaos orb. So if you fill up your prefixes, it's actually fine on these boots since um, let me simulate. Maybe if we filled up our prefixes, it might be kind of hard to do this since we don't have any prefixes besides the meta mod. So it would take a lot of veiled chaos orbs to fill them up. Um, but here we go. See, we filled up our prefixes here. It's actually not really an issue since all you have to do is use any exarch, you know, lesser ember, boom. And then you're just going to use Eldritch Null to clear up your prefixes and you can go again. All you would have to do is if you're not happy with your prefixes, you could just annul one of them and then lock suffixes again and, and do another Veiled Chaos Orb. But here we go. Let's do our Veiled Chaos Orb since our suffixes are done. We have our Veiled Prefix. We are going to craft, I believe even with Strength Dex, we would want to craft Mana. Um, yeah, because we can unveil Mana. It's a 36% 36.9% chance, uh, but we want to unveil one of these 50% uh, crafts here. So movement speed, movement speed, movement speed. It should be an over 90% chance of success here. So let's go ahead. We craft mana, bench craft it to block that mana unveil, unveil, movement speed. Now, there's some people that would want to have Onslaught on kill, so you would have to continue doing this until you unveil Onslaught on kill. You can't deterministically get it other than just continually veiled chaos orbing. Uh, if you're going to do that, though, I would recommend not stopping until you get double T1 attributes because you're going to be spending so much on prefixes to try to get that onslaught on kill that you might as well make sure your suffixes are top tier, right? Uh, that's what I would recommend. But yeah, you would probably just keep doing this process. Look, we got onslaught on kill, so we have an onslaught source. Uh, influence boots are not super high value on TS Omni since you already get a source of Tailwind from the build and Onslaught on Kill is really not that hard to get somewhere in the build. So the only thing you're really getting is Elusive, which is not that incredibly strong. It is great, but it, it's not, maybe doesn't warrant doing, you know, spending the investment on Influence boots just for Elusive, right? Uh, and Onslaught and Tailwind effect. Maybe later on, but for this case, we're going to assume we want just the Avoid Ailment uh, boots. So all you do here, you just finish with Crafted Life, and you're going to go ahead and use an Exalt Slam if you have an open prefix. We block life so that we can't slam something like T9 life or something. Like, we don't want to be sad and slam that, right? So boom, we got some, you know, hybrid armor evasion, which is nice. You know, most everything is going to be helpful in some way. Even if you get rarity, rarity is actually good these days. I mean, T1 rarity would actually be good if you, if you get some rares in your map with Arch Nemesis modifiers. Well, let's go ahead and move into the implicits. So implicits are going to be pretty simple. Um, I believe for avoid ailment, we're going to be using, uh, you know, we're going to use lesser ickers. You can go higher if you'd like, but keep in mind the higher you go, the more uh, diluted, it's going to be more diluted your mod pool is because you're going to have uh, pinnacle atlas boss mods. You're going to have like unique boss mods. It's going to get really annoying if you're looking for something like avoid, which is not the most common mod. Um, but yeah, so for this case, we're going for avoid boots. So you would spam this until you get your avoid. Boom, we have our avoid. And now what you want to do is you see we have two T6 mods. We want to upgrade this to 50% plus, I'm going to assume you want for this build. So, um, what you're going to want to do is once you hit it, you're going to want to use an, L an exceptional ember. It's going to make that a tier three modifier, and we're going to use an orb of conflict. Now, since this is tier three and this is tier six, it's going to be a very high chance to upgrade our Eater of Worlds modifier, our Avoid Ailment. Boom, we got it to tier five, and you're actually not going to slam it again. You can, but I recommend using another exceptional um, Ember. Uh, and let's go ahead and upgrade. Now, if you hit a really good Exarch mod, you could just stop. Since you are using exceptional embers, they're going to be really good. But this is unique enemy, brittle. I know Omni likes to get brittle, but if it's unique enemy, that's, uh, you know, that's very situational. It has a conditional on there. So you might not want to keep that. But if you hit regular brittle, you might just want to stop and try to math out if this is enough avoid. We upgrade. We're going to go one more time. Um, it's not going to be 50% if you do it one more time, but at this point, you know, it gets pretty RNG. You could start losing. See, we literally brought this mod to, to perfect T1 and we downgraded it all the way back to lesser. In this situation, you'd be pretty sad, but we do have a really high chance of continually upgrading it. If we have absolutely disgustingly bad RNG, we would delete it off the item. 
but we can keep spamming until this is tier four. So T4, T3, T3, T4. Let's go ahead and use another exceptional ember. So they're both tier three and we have 55% avoid ailment. So you could stop here, or if you wanna math it out and you want more avoid, you could go for another gamble, but keep in mind, this is where dreams are crushed, but luckily we won. So these boots are pretty insane. If you got your implicits uh, up, you'd have 60 plus percent avoid ailment boots actually. Um, so in this situation, we're done with our implicit. You could push it higher, you need to math it out. But at this point, I would probably use grand embers to finish our, our other implicit. Um, if you really want to go for the best in slot, I believe for boots, your best in slot is gonna be action speed. Yeah, so you'd probably wanna go till action speed. Um, but it, keep in mind, it's, it's low weight, so it is going to take a lot of embers. Uh, some people like to stop on just movement speed. Um, some people like to stop on chaos res. But other than that, there's not that much that's high value because you can't, um, you know, obviously brittle ground, actually. If you don't have a source of brittle, this could be your brittle ground, um, ac your, your access to brittle, I mean, on the build. So you would choose what you want to spam for and you would stop on that and then you'd be done. You would not upgrade this further because you can't because you'd be downgrading your avoid ailment, but you would go until you find whatever you're happy with. So this is the last currency sync on that. So uh, let's go. That's done with uh, method one. All right. So let's cover method two where you want two attribute mods, but you also want um, you know, chaos resistance or spell suppression. Now, this is really simple, so I'm not going to do a whole long thing for that. I'm not going to cover implicits again or anything like that. I'm not going to cover the prefixes again. But all it is, is if you have fractured strength, you're going to use sorrow essences for decks. And if you had fractured dexterity, you would just use rage essences. And you're just going to spam that until you hit, um, sorry, you're just going to spam that until you hit the modifier that you're looking for. Now, um, so basically, let's go to the calculator. Uh, we're going to be using Sorrow Essences this time. Where are they at? Okay, and our Fractured modifier is going to be Strength. So let's go ahead and Fracture our Strength. Oops, I already had it. I don't know why I undid it. Okay, and if you want, if you specifically want spell suppression, it's going to be a one in 121 de sorrow essence. Keep in mind, sorrows are cheaper, so you probably want to get fractured strength to do something like this. And if you want only chaos res, it's going to be a one in 242. Some people would say that you could just lock suffixes and reforge chaos until you hit what you're looking for, because it, but it is a one in six, so it's going to be 12 divines on average. This is going to be way cheaper than 12 divines, obviously. But if you're happy with spell suppression or chaos res, you're looking at a one in 181. So that's going to be way easier to hit. So anyway, we would just spam these essences. I think I, uh, yeah, so. We would just spam these, look at that T1 spell suppression, and then like I said before, if you want chaos res, you'd wait for chaos res, but if you're okay with suppress, you do that. Block suffixes, veiled chaos orb, um, and then we do like we said before, block mana, unveil. Now if you're only looking for uh, onslaught, you would have to keep doing this process until you got your onslaught. This would be still the best way to do it, blocking mana and just continually veiled chaos orbing if you fill up your prefixes you would not have these implicits done yet because um it would be an issue if you're going for avoid implicits because you can't eldritch annul your ex your prefix if you have a high tier eater of worlds implicit right so that's why you want to wait to do this implicit since it's avoid boots now if you're not doing avoid boots you won't have to worry about that so if you're not going for avoid on your boots Let's say we're not going for our 50 to 60 plus percent avoid boots. You do have access to other Eater of Worlds implicits. Now, they aren't fantastic, but you could do fizz damage as extra, you know, cold or something if you're doing fizz convert. Uh, there's not really that much, you know, accessible, to be honest. That's that great for the build outside of, uh, you know, the avoid, which is why most people go with avoid, though. So either way, I hope this helps out guys. And uh, I'll be making more Omni guides in the future. But hopefully, you know, this uh, cleared up some things for you. And I'll see you in the next one.